The biggest camera update ever, when we look at these first comparison shots, it doesn't look like that, but they do exist, the differences between the cameras of the iPhone 13 Pro and 14 Pro. And today we're going to find out what they are. There are a number of surprising results. To make this a little more exciting, I'm awarding points for the improvements in video quality. In each category, the 14 Pro gets 2 points if it's significantly better than the iPhone 13 Pro, 1 point if it's only slightly better, and none if there is barely a difference. So what's your guess? How many points will the 14 Pro make? More than 10? Let's find out. Let's start by comparing the field of view of the different lenses. In particular, the main camera has received a new larger sensor and also new lens. What wasn't mentioned at all during the unveiling of the new iPhone is that the focal length of the main camera has been changed. Previously, the main camera had 26 mm, but now it has 24 mm. The viewing angle of the main camera should therefore be a bit wider. However, when we look at these first shots, we notice that this is not the case. A somewhat surprising result considering that the lenses have a different focal length. I almost couldn't believe it, so I took several comparison shots, but the result was always the same. With the ultra-wide lens, I couldn't notice any differences either. With the telephoto lens, however, I noticed that the field of view of the iPhone 14 Pro partly differs from the field of view of the iPhone 13 Pro. Sometimes the frame is wider, sometimes it is narrower. A very surprising result. Perhaps this is related to the stabilization. The iPhone 14 Pro has also received an additional focal length. In the camera app, this is indicated as 2x. This is not an additional lens. Rather, the image from the main camera, which has the 48 megapixel sensor, is simply cropped. And that actually works quite well. Here you can see a comparison with a digital crop on the iPhone 13 Pro. So on the 13 Pro, I simply manually enlarged the image to 2x during shooting and then compared it to the 2x shot from the iPhone 14 Pro. The 14 Pro shot looks significantly better. An extra lens, even if it's not a real lens here, is a big advantage in my opinion. So the iPhone 14 Pro gets two points from me for that. Colors and contrast are among the most important quality features of a video recording. How good a recording ultimately looks depends on the colors and contrast. Of course, these two characteristics are created in the software, but lenses and sensors can also have an influence on color and contrast. In fact, there is hardly any difference between the shots of the 14 Pro and the 13 Pro. Both images look good and only when we look very closely can we see differences. For example, the blue on the iPhone 14 Pro moves more towards teal. The colors also have a bit more saturation. This makes the image look a bit more cinematic and a bit better. Otherwise, there are hardly any differences to be noticed here. I give the iPhone 14 Pro a point for this. Although I realize that this is a rather generous point. The most important color, however, is the color of the skin tones. We notice incorrect skin tones very quickly. I honestly can't tell the difference in skin tones. This shot was taken with the main lens. And this shot here I took with the front camera. Again, I can't tell any difference in the skin tones. But can you see in the background how the blue in the sky differs? But the 14 Pro doesn't get an extra point for the skin tones. The new sensor of the iPhone 14 Pro's main camera and its 48 megapixels should lead to better results, especially in low light. These shots here were taken at dusk. And when we look at these first comparison shots, we see that there is indeed a huge difference. The iPhone 14 Pro's shot looks much cleaner and contains much less noise than the iPhone 13 Pro's shot. You may not be able to see this difference as well on YouTube, but I can assure you that a very clear difference is visible here. And I have to admit that the difference is much bigger than I would have expected. Unlike the main camera, the telephoto camera has not received more megapixels, but it has received a larger aperture, which could also lead to better results in low light. And as you can see here in these shots, which were also taken at dusk, the 14 Pro's shot is much cleaner and better than the iPhone 13 Pro's shot. It contains less digital sharpness and significantly fewer artifacts. With the ultra-wide lens, the difference is perhaps the smallest. But even here, the performance in low light could be improved a bit. The iPhone 14 Pro's shot has less image noise and it looks slightly better overall. Here you can see another comparison shot of the main camera. In absolute darkness and artificial light. In contrast to before, the difference is not as obvious in this case, but it is clearly present here as well. For the performance in low light, the iPhone 14 Pro gets 2 points from me. 
Although the iPhone 14 Pro's main camera now has 48 megapixels, it is not capable of shooting at a resolution above 4K. In fact, the sensor would be capable of taking videos in 8K. I'm curious to see if this new sensor will still be able to capture more detail in 4K. So let's start with a comparison of the two main cameras. This is a magnification of 200%. And here you can see that despite the many megapixels, the iPhone 14 Pro's main camera can't show more details in 4K. Even when magnified, the image looks almost identical to the iPhone 13 Pro's image. It definitely does not show more details. Of course, the iPhone 14 Pro also has the advantage here that it has the 2x lens. As seen earlier, the 2x lens produces a much better image than a digital crop on the iPhone 13 Pro. Even with the telephoto lens, I can't see any more detail in the magnification than on the iPhone 13 Pro. And of course, the same is true for the ultra-wide lens. So when it comes to details, I can't say that the iPhone 14 Pro would be a step forward. I guess we'll have to wait for higher resolution for that. I have already awarded points for the additional lens. Therefore, there is no point for the iPhone 14 Pro in this category. A special quality feature of a video camera is its behavior and situations, but there are very dark and very bright areas in the same image. In this context, we also speak of dynamic range. Especially the bright areas in the image tend to burn out in such situations and no longer show any details. Therefore, the question arises whether Apple could make progress here. You can see several comparison shots of the different cameras here. These shots, for example, were taken in changing lighting conditions. Especially in these cases, very many cameras have difficulties. You basically have to say that the iPhone has a fantastic dynamic range. However, there is hardly any difference between the shots of the iPhone 14 Pro and the iPhone 13 Pro. For this reason, there is also no point for the iPhone 14 Pro when it comes to dynamic range. Apple has introduced innovations in the next two test categories this year. For example, the cinematic mode. On the iPhone 13 Pro, the cinematic mode is only available in 1080 and at 30 frames per second. This is absurd, because cinematic shots are usually taken at a frame rate of 24 or 25 frames per second. Therefore, it makes perfect sense that the iPhone 14 Pro is now capable of shooting at 24 or 25 frames per second in cinematic mode. In addition, the iPhone 14 Pro can now also shoot cinematic footage in 4K. However, as you can see from these shots, both smartphones still struggle with the same difficulties. They still fail to perfectly isolate the subject. I would say that the cinematic mode is therefore still not fully perfected. However, I'm still glad that the innovations exist. Therefore, I give the iPhone 14 Pro one point for the innovations in cinematic mode. Another innovation on the iPhone 14 Pro is the so-called action mode. In action mode, the stabilization of the shot is supposed to work much better. And the action mode is therefore particularly suitable for shots where there are very fast movements. For example, when running or perhaps walking. Before we take a closer look at the action mode, however, I would like to check whether the iPhone 14 Pro shows an improved stabilization even without the action mode. To test this, I took a number of comparison shots. In this shot, for example, I tried to keep the camera as steady as possible while doing a dolly forward. Both shots look good, and in both cases, the image is well stabilized by the camera. This one is a shot while walking. This shot was also taken with the main camera. Perhaps a slight improvement can be seen with the iPhone 14 Pro. The same may be true for the ultra-wide lens, but the difference is really small. Let's see how the cameras perform when running. Maybe I'm just imagining it, but I would say that the iPhone 14 Pro stabilizes the image much better than the iPhone 13 Pro. This is especially true for the main camera, but there is also a slight improvement with the ultra-wide camera. I honestly wouldn't have expected that. All right, let's activate the action mode. You should know that the action mode leads to a significant crop of the image. This crop also leads to a very clear reduction in image quality. In fact, with the action mode, the recording is limited to 2.8K and it is not possible to shoot in 4K. Here you can see a comparison of the image crop and the image quality when we turn the action mode on and off. And you can see that the action mode leads to a significant decrease in image quality. So it's really only recommended if you really need it. In this first comparison shot while walking, for example, you get the impression that the action mode doesn't bring any great advantages. The situation clearly changes when running. Now the camera is moved much more and the better stabilization can show its advantages. Overall, I therefore consider the action mode to be a successful innovation. The iPhone 14 Pro gets two points for the better stabilization. As you surely know, the iPhone is capable of taking slow motion shots in 1080. This is done by shooting at 120 or 240 frames per second. I don't understand why the iPhone still can't do slow motion in 4K. Several cameras, which certainly have a slower processor than the iPhone, are capable of shooting in 4K at 120 frames per second. 
I have the impression that this shot taken at 120 frames per second looks minimally better on the iPhone 14 Pro. However, you have to look at the shot in magnification for that. And of course, you realize just how much the image quality is reduced when shooting in slow motion. In this shot here, taken at 240 frames per second, I honestly can't tell any difference at all. I really have a hard time giving the iPhone 14 Pro a point for the slow motion shots because of this. Thus, zero points. Imagine if this video here had extremely poor audio quality. I'm sure you would have turned it off long ago. Audio quality is one of the absolute most important qualities of a good video recording. Right now you're hearing the audio from the iPhone 14 Pro and the iPhone 13 Pro alternately. Can you tell a crucial difference? Let's do some more shots outdoors. It's pretty windy outside right now, so the conditions are definitely challenging for the cameras. This is an audio test shot with the selfie camera. This is an audio test shot with the selfie camera. I think this one is more important than the audio test made in the office. I think this one is more important than the audio test made in the office. Okay, that's hard. In the office, the 14 Pro's recording sounded better to me. Outside, maybe even the 13 Pro. I couldn't find any decisive advantage with the wind. So no point for the iPhone 14 Pro. So the iPhone 14 Pro gets 8 points from me overall for the improved quality in video recording. Of course, the awarding of points is subjective and the improvement in low light really surprised me. Did you expect more or can we be satisfied with the iPhone 14 Pro? Write me your opinion in the comments. I say goodbye for today with a few comparison shots. And give me a like as feedback if the video was interesting for you. There will be more iPhone 14 and 14 Pro tests and tutorials coming soon. So stay tuned and see you next time.